Well, it's snowing here in Scotland, so that means it's time to do a festive video and reap all the SEO that I can. I've got the Christmas tree out and joined in with the latest fashion trends. Anyone not British get the joke? Little Santa Paws here has checked his list twice and says I've been nice-ish. Okay, promises were made, so here's the Cute Thief Mark II's gift. His favourite treats. Yummy! Thanks, little man. I wonder what it is. Oh, I'm inspired. Well, I've already got one of these though. Plus, some vandals have scribbled all over it. Whoever these strange people are, they have no respect. Not to be ungrateful though, this is still an amazing gift despite the vandalism, so let's start building it. So yeah, this is an inspired flow, the entry level model and one I get requested a lot to cover. Despite this being the cheapest model in their lineup, it shares some great features of the original foreplay. Like the same head tube gusset, dropouts and one piece chainstay yoke. Charles bikes often break at the chainstay, so this one piece yoke is a great feature to keep the strength up. The cute thing, I mean Santa paws, looks like he spent plenty of time testing his frame. It's a good job they're so strong. Is it me? Or does it look a little on the small side though? Eh, it's probably just far away. Let's see what else we have. Aha! A headset! FSA bringing some smooth steering. Full speed ahead to the fitting. Now if the big box is from Santa Paws, then this little one is from the Cute Thief Mark II. I hope it's not fragile. What is this? A fork for ants? I think I've grown, as this matching flow fork looks small too. No matter the size, it follows the trend of using proven technology from the Inspired's previous models to give a strong yet light fork. The stem is a fairly normal 90 by 35 size. Street trials riders tend to run high front ends, so this helps get some height. Believe it or not, these scratches aren't the work of the Cute Thief Mark II. I just don't know how to open cardboard boxes properly. People often mention the lack of grease in my bike builds. Well, I do grease stuff, I just don't always show it. So there. To go with the stem today, we have some Trartec handlebars. I don't know much about these bars, but I think you know what I need to do next. Well, they sound great, so they must be good. Someone approves. Let's give the elf on the shelf a proper place to sit. The butt rest is the same one piece inspired cooker combo that I've been running on my silver hex. It's lightweight and a lovely shape. But the post is too small, so we need to add a shim, shir, or shem. Gotta cover those pronouns. Much better. Although, Elf has got some growing to do before he can ride it. I did want to keep on theme and use some duck fat for the grease, but apparently we need it for the roast potatoes. Pfft, whatever. The arse bearings are from Trartec again, and not only does it work well, but it's extremely easy to fit. I just wish all bike parts did this. More Trartec with the cranks. Simple, forged models with ISIS fitting. Strong and cheap. 
Snapping cranks is never fun. There's a 22 tooth chainring up front, which is fairly normal for street trials. Smaller gives more ground clearance, but puts more stress on the chain, making them more likely to snap. Any bigger, and you'll just hit the bash guard more often. Elf on the shelf helping with the greasing. What a nice guy. Guys, what is going on with this bike? It's tiny. Is Santa Paws playing a joke on me or something? The teeny front wheel is a Tratec hub with some seriously smooth bearings onto a single wall inspired rim. The rear wheel has a matching hub, but this is built onto a double wall Halo T2 rim. Can't imagine this ever bending. It's so small, tight and stiff. But as you can see, there's no free wheel. This hub has a threaded section, so you can screw on a free wheel of your choice. In this case, it's a 16 tooth Tratec Trials free wheel. Trials free wheels have tougher springs and more engagement points than normal free wheels. This means they're less likely to skip, and if they do, they don't skip far, and they give more control. Three-wheel threads are pretty fine, so it's really important to grease them and make sure it's going on straight. I normally rotate it backwards first to allow it to fall into the first thread, which helps make sure it's as straight as possible. There's no lock ring needed, pedal pressure will tighten it up, and the three-wheel mechanism won't allow it to unscrew. Now, I love tubeless for street trials, so I'm going to see if I convert this rear wheel. I'll start by cleaning the rim and applying some Gorilla rim tape to seal it. One issue is that the rim is drilled for Schrader and I'll be fitting a Presto valve. To fix this, I add a few more layers of tape at the valve to stop it from being forced through. Now the tyre is a Maxxis Holy Roller. They're not tubeless tyres, but I have successfully run them tubeless in the past. It just takes a little more effort. Well, that fitted easily enough. Although it doesn't feel like there's an insert. I don't have a tiny insert, so I'll just try it without one. I'll see if I can inflate it without any sealant first. Nope. Let's take the valve core out and see if we can get more airflow. Still no. This isn't looking good. I feed the baby wheel some nourishing tubeless milk to see if that helps. <laughs> the only thing that did was make a huge mess. I have one last resort before I go back to the tube though. I have some rim packed 29 inserts waiting for the day I eventually get a wagon wheeled bike. I think I can make one of these fit a smaller wheel. If I just chop out a section and rejoin it, then it might make the wheel easier to inflate. That's more like it. Now I just need to join the ends. To do this, I'm going to use my favourite tool, fire. I'm hoping by melting the ends I can bond them together, much like two pieces of Christmas chocolate. Seems to have worked, but it doesn't feel like a super strong bond, so I'll reinforce it with a zip tie. I poke two holes with a poking guy, thread a zip tie through, and pull tight. This should stay together with no issues now. Let's fit it and try again. Let's see if this works.
great success. Um, maybe not that great. Got plenty of leaking going on. The plan is to try and get the sealant all over the inner wall and beads. Inflate it and leave it on either side until they seal. Might take 15 minutes, might take days. Fingers crossed it does it quickly. Well, through the magic of editing, it only took a matter of seconds to seal. Quite a lot of effort, but that's the hardest part done now. One down, one to go. But because this front wheel is single wall, and front wheels don't get as abused in trials, so punctures are less likely, and that I'm a lazy, lazy man, I'm not going tubeless up front. This should save a lot of time too. <laughs> it sure did. Now I don't think there's been enough drama in this video. Let's cue the dramatic music to build some tension. Or I guess I could just fit the tensioner instead. Vertical dropouts need a system to keep the chain tight and Chartec makes this tensioner to do exactly that. The good thing about these is that they lock in position and don't bounce about, making them a lot quieter. As for chains, my new favourite chain is an obvious choice of chain. As always, I try to get it as short as possible. The fewer links there are, the fewer places it can snap, the quieter it will be, and it will also be lighter. It's a win-win situation. And a top tip, a stiff link can be fixed by flexing the chain sideways lightly. Don't go mad though. To set the tension, I use a thin tool to tighten the spring and then tighten the fixing bolt. Now I can make it move, let's make it stop. Avid SD5 V brakes will do this duty. Cheap, but they're actually pretty good brakes. To help with power are some Gypsy Clear pads. These work great on smooth rims. The levers are some of my all-time favourites, the Avid ST7. I like these mainly because they have an adjustable leverage ratio. Turning this dial moves the cable closer to the pivot, which increases power. It's also a great way to adjust how firm or soft the brake feels. Now it may not have a split clamp like most disc brake levers, but you can put the bolt in from either side to reduce the risk of hitting your knees on it, which I think is a nice touch. Now I was supplied some brake cable, but because the bike's in a stand, I can't fit it, so I'll just cut it to length for now. There's a whole video's worth of tips for smooth cables, but an easy one is to use a PTFE spray like GT85. It makes a huge difference. I'll finish that out of the stands, so let's do the front brake next. Which is an Avid BB5. Now a lot of people assume cable disc brakes are rubbish, but they can actually be really powerful, especially Avid models. In fact, the BB7 was one of the most powerful and popular front brakes for trials in the mid 2000s. However, they can be a little fiddly to set up. They rely on slightly flexing the rotor to hit the other pad, so are sensitive to misalignment. 
It's nice to have matching levers, not always the case running a front disc and rear rim brake, so I have another SD7 lever to match the rear. I've cut the cables long enough to let the bars rotate at least once so they're not damaged in a crash, but also to allow tricks like tail whips and bar spins be possible. A bit of fine tuning to get the non-moving pad as close as possible, and a bit of rotor tuning and the brake feels really nice. In the box was some inspired push on grips. They have an internal bar end plug which needs fitting first. And to fit the grips I'm going to use some GT85 again. You may think I've gone mad, it is quite possible, I mean I did dress a cat up in a Santa outfit, but surely the same slippery spray I used for the cables would be the worst idea to keep grips in place. But no, for whatever reason GT85 actually works really well. We used it in the bike shop I was a mechanic at and the grips are solidly in place after just a short while. Plus I really like the smell. You actually have to be pretty quick, they can grip before they're fully on. Now that we've got somewhere for our upper legs to grip, let's add somewhere for our lower legs. How about some Crank Brothers nylon pedals? I don't mind if I do. Ok, let's take it down, finish the back brake and make sure things are tight. It doesn't seem any bigger, in fact it seems even smaller now. But at least everything is tight, let's take it outside and see if it fits. You know what, it's lovely but I don't think my back is going to like this. I need to double check something, one moment. Not that I'm ungrateful towards Santa Paws, but it simply doesn't fit me. Ah, this explains everything. There's been a mix up. This bike wasn't for me at all. It was actually meant to be delivered to Thorfinn, a young rider who rides clan shows with me. It's such a cool bike though, perfect for a younger rider who wants to get into trials, or an older one looking for a laugh. I'm tempted to keep it. But nah, I ended up doing the right thing. Thorfinn's parents are bringing him over for a little surprise. I hope he likes it. Someone is arriving. Hello there. Hiya. <laughs> Hello. How are you? Good. Do you know why you're here? No. Okay, so basically the cute thief has been bringing me some pretty cool bikes lately. But it's gone, got me an item. It's just a bit too small for me, so I'm wondering whether this thing would suit you better. So if okay. you come down here, you can come down here. I'm going to open the door for you. Okay. Uh, let me know if you want this. If you don't want it, you don't have to have it, but... There is an, um, an so item there for you. I'll just have it. <laughs> <laughs> so, basically, got you a new bike. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas, dude. Thank you. Right, helmet on. There you go, you put that. It's gonna get hard to get I'd be a bit different to your usual bikes. Actually looks like the perfect size for him as well. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, it's that's absolutely great. brilliant. Mm -hmm. Squeaky brakes, yes. <laughs> Got the squeaky brakes. Yeah. <laughs> well, Merry Christmas. I hope you enjoy yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> now I don't normally finish a bike build without a bike, but I'm glad it's gone to a good home. 
I hope you enjoyed the video and I really hope you all have an amazing Christmas and New Year. Here's hoping 2022 will be a kind one. Thanks for watching. See you later.